accept. Welcome to Telemetry Overlay. Let's add GPS and sensor data to your videos. Whether you shoot with a GoPro, an Insta360, a drone, or any camera plus external data from a phone, watch, or activity logger. Find all the compatible formats in the instructions manual. If you do one of the sports from the presets, you can select it, but otherwise just select a loosely similar one. For example, for running, you could pick cycling. For karting, pick car circuit. For rowing, you could pick sailing, and so on. You can change your mind later. Let's pick cycling for the tutorial, and now we can load our video. These are GoPro videos recorded with the GPS setting. But if your camera does not record GPS data, we will see how to import it from an external file later. We could just pick one file, but the GoPro camera divided this one in multiple files. So we can select them all instead, and the program will join both the videos and the data as long as they are consecutive. So just drag and drop the files and the software will optimize them, meaning it will make playback possible or better within the program. If you want to do the whole process quicker, you can skip this step. Now the GPS and sensor data is being processed and this is the default cycling look. It's got speed, altitude, bearing, GPS path, slope, distance, and some more gauges. This will work great for many more sports. If you like it like this, go to the export section, leave the default settings, press export, and after the render, you're done. You can find links to the software website and more resources in the video description. But if you wanna learn how to customize things, stay with me. We can go back to the gauges section and see how each gauge can be selected to bring up its controls on the right hand side. At the top, we've got buttons to remove, reset, move to the top, duplicate, lock, and hide the gauge. We can also change its title. Next, we can change visual settings like the size. And let's move the GPS path to the top to see it better. Every gauge has color controls for most of its components, but these, like the other controls, change from gauge to gauge, so this is just an example. Further below, we've got a series of tabs. Here, text allows us to display the current coordinates. The labels include the gauge title, the gauge is our position, which can take different shapes and sizes. The path is our route, which can be full or partial. And shape has some general settings, quite interesting ones actually for the current gauge, the GPS path. We can change the opacity of the background or the map style. There are multiple map styles and satellite imagery options. There's a specific tutorial on maps, check it out if you want to know more. Below the visual settings, we've got value settings. These are things like how the program reads the data. Here, do we use the color to convey altitude or speed? Things like the units to display our values. Or if we want to smoothen the data to correct small inaccuracies. Some gauges allow trimming and expanding to control the amount of data you display. And at the bottom, we see the telemetry source we are using and some data quality filters for that source. Let's move the GPS path back to its place and see how to add new gauges. You just go to add gauge and can filter them by type, by activity, by shape, or just search them by keyword. All these would be related to speed. Speed versus time, for example, is a graph of our speed for the entire activity. There are custom gauges as well, where you choose your style and then choose the data you want to display. And as easy as that, we've created a different speedometer. Let's remove this. And if you change your mind about the preset you selected, you can go to patterns on the bottom left and just pick a different one. For example, drone. You can decide whether to keep the existing gauges and styles. And this is the drone preset, 
with not only different styles and colors, but also different gauges. Like right here, the camera settings. Let's explore the car circuit preset as well, because this cycling race was in a circuit. So in addition to a different speedometer, we also have a lap timer. The finish line was set automatically, but we can set it manually to have very precise lap times. Some of these activities and presets have dedicated tutorials where you can learn more details. But feel free to experiment with the presets, create your own layout, and save it as a pattern to use in any project. And speaking of project, let's explore the project section. On the right hand side, we've got general settings like the project name, technical ones like resolution and frame rate, orientation in case you record it upside down or sideways, default colors, which only apply to new gauges, not existing ones, shadow controls to make things stand out, text border to make text more readable, fonts, where you can choose most of your system fonts for standard gauges and mono space for minimal ones, and drawers, where you can create areas of any color for gauges to stand out. The in and out points allow us to shorten our project to only the interesting section of our video. As mentioned before, we are using GPS data from the GoPro camera itself. That is convenient, but not every camera records GPS data, so you can record your data externally with a phone, a smartwatch, an activity tracker, or even your car or bike electronics, and import it from the telemetry section. I'm importing data from a Garmin bike computer. Now we get a chance to reapply our preset, and the nice thing about activity trackers is you get additional sensors and data streams. So, out of the box, we've got temperature, heart rate, cadence, and more accurate altitude, as it's now based on a barometer. So even if your camera has a GPS antenna, recording an external backup file is very advisable. Here, the data was synced automatically to the GoPro video because there was enough valid information, but as you can see, there are many syncing options, so if your data does not sync automatically, make sure to check out the tutorial on synchronization. To wrap up this overview, let's have a look at the top right menu. You can save your project to finish it later, open an existing project, create a new project from scratch, or change the general settings with things like cache, folders, preset units, visual guides, default pattern, advanced map styles, and other advanced options to improve your workflow and results. Note that the program is full of tooltips, both in the question mark icons or by hovering on the options. And you can access the help section to read the detailed manual, watch more specific tutorials, and learn the keyboard shortcuts. So again, when you're happy with your result, go to the export section, choose your export settings. For example, you can export to a transparent video to finish your work in Premiere, Final Cut, or Resolve. See the manual and tutorials for more information. Export, wait for the render, and enjoy the result. The software keeps improving, so stay tuned for new features. Thank you to all the users that contributed with footage for these tutorials. Find their channels in the video description. I hope this was useful. Feel free to ask any questions and see you in the next one.